Hello and welcome to Heart of Amethyst. This is a newish visual novel that has been out for not that long, I think. I'm not sure. Um, this uh, I didn't hear about it until maybe like a month ago when somebody mentioned it. So yeah, um, I know next to nothing about it. I only played the prologue, which is what I'm going to be doing today. And um, yeah, the, the fox dude right here that's in the main cover is um the protagonist i i think <laughs> um so yeah L let's begin and see what's th this story is all about the story of our world is a long and complicated one but like any story it has a beginning Once upon a time, this world was but a mere mass of nothingness. The air was dry, the water sparse, and the land dead. Years passed, and there was no hope for that place. But one day, three celestial beings took notice of this and descended from up above. Gramun, the goddess of strength. She used her fists to set the land straight giving form to the mountains, valleys, and many other things. Leg Legere, the goddess of wisdom. She created the rain and with it, plants grew from the soil and the land turned lush and beautiful. And Yum, the goddess of spirit, used many rocks, branches, and other inanimate things to create wildlife giving birth to animals in the sea, land, and sky. Once that was done, the three of them smiled at their creations. Happy with their work, they set their course back home. But when Yum took a last glance to the land, she noticed how lonely it was. So, acting behind her sister's back, she blew on the golden desert sand. And from there, the first feline race emerged who seemed to be different from all her previous creations. Seeing Yum's work, curiosity took over Legere. I, I don't know how to pronounce these names, so I'm sorry. Who in turn used the delicate snowflakes of ice mountains to create other intelligent beings. The cunning birds. Lastly, overflown by jealousy, Gramune wished to create something herself. So she gathered many crystals and minerals from the vast land giving rise to the brave canines. The three races lived in peace for many years. So pleased with their creations, each of the three goddesses gave something to the people of their continent as a gift. Grimune gifted the three species the strength to fight against the cruel odds of the world. Legere gifted the three species the wisdom to organize themselves in communities and develop the tools that they may need. And Yum gifted the three species with emotions and dreams, giving them hope and happiness. These divine gifts were meant to be used for the good of them all. But the darkness found a way into their hearts, and the species decided to use them for their own purposes. Soon, the flame of war set ablaze. Each of the species fought bitterly, and millions of lives were lost after years of war and conflict. Feeling extremely guilty for this, the three goddesses found a solution by giving their lands a last gift. They sent the first apostle to the world. The apostle was the only being that bared a perfect balance of the three celestial gifts within it. Using strength, wisdom, and a strong soul, the apostle managed to convince the king of the canines, Andreas, to stop the relentless war. And with that, peace came back to the land. With their world finally at peace, the three goddesses returned home to get the rest they deserved, allowing the land and its inhabitants to grow, create, and share their blessings and gifts on their own. And they were sure that if anything else were to happen, the world would always have the apostle to set things right once more. Prologue the life of a commoner. 
and that's how the goddess created the world. All right, that's enough for today, honey. Time for bed. Mother places the book on her lap and smiles softly towards me. She then moves a black string of hair from her face and yawns. But Ma, I want to stay awake for a little longer. I cringe at the thought of going to sleep this early. It's not even my bedtime yet, and the sun just set a few moments ago. Mom is tired, Ellie. We'll continue tomorrow. The bags under her eyes are proof of that. Sadly for me, Mom seems to be tired all the time lately. It probably has something to do with Daddy not being home. After all, he's out selling some of the goods that were produced in our farm. Which means that, while Dad is gone, Mom needs to take care of her two kids, watch over the animals, tend to the crops, and perform her duties as a healer. But... Honey, Mommy is really tired. I'll read you some more tomorrow. She says again as she rubs her eyes, not giving much importance to my childish complaints. Ba -ba -ba. You always say the same thing. I protest some more, but she pays me no mind, laughing it off. Aw, come here, you silly puppy. She opens her arms to me, and even if I want to stay mad at her, I can't resist a hug. My greatest weakness. Your dad should be here by tomorrow. We'll read you all night once he returns. Sounds good? You promise? Yes, I do. She gently kisses my forehead and then lets go of me. Now, it's time to get ready. I watch as she moves around the room, placing the big red book back in the bookshelf, tidying up the chair where she was sitting. Then she goes to take care of the final arrangements for bedtime. While she does all of that, I distract myself by looking through the window. The night outside is very peaceful. If you pay enough attention, you can easily see the moonlight shining on the leaves of the trees and hear the grasshoppers singing their night song. Silly animals, they'll be frog food by the morning. I mean, they could hop on a tree and stay there, but they just love their grass, don't they? It makes sense. After all, they are grasshoppers. Not tree hoppers. Eli, your sister's crying. It took me some time to hear it, but she was right. Little Mary is crying her heart out on the other room. Mom can sometimes be very impressive. I wonder if all moms have this sort of abilities, enhance senses, the power to predict the future, and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, I do as I'm told, walking to the other side of the room, fetching my baby sis. After taking her on my arms, Mary stopped crying. This baby just hates being alone. I move back to where mom is, trying to give the baby to her. Here she is. I say, but my mom just ignores my pleas for help and continues working on her tasks. You carry her, honey. I'm busy. With that said, she moves away to work on something else. So I just return to my window, but this time with a baby in my hands. Can you listen to them, Mary? The grasshoppers are singing beautifully tonight, and the frogs will be very happy by the morning. Seeing her sleep on my arms brings a smile to my face. Right on cue, little Mary opens her eyes and looks back at me. She is clearly expecting me to do something so I try to make a funny face for her to laugh at. I succeed. Her baby giggles, warming the room. You ready for bed, Eli? You know I'm not, but I must. My quick responses makes her laugh, as she hugs me from behind. Now, now, don't be like that. We have an agreement. She starts humming in my ear, her best strategy to make me sleepy, but that hasn't worked on me since I was five. I'm a big boy now. I'm ten and a half. Yes, honey. You are. Now time for bed. But ma I end up being dragged to bed. She places the baby on her crib, then helps me tidy up, giving me a last motherly kiss on the forehead. I stay up for a little longer, mostly thinking about all the cool stuff Dad is going to bring from his trip to the city. I'm so excited for tomorrow. Woken up by the rustling outside, I slowly but steadily walk to the main room. 
There I see Mother speaking to one of the girls from the village. Samantha, if I'm not mistaken. She's been here once or twice. I think her dad is sick. Oh, Hilda, I am so afraid. He started puking blood again, and last night it was definitely the worst one so far. It's okay, Samantha. Bring him in. I'll see what I can do. The girl nods and quickly exits the house. Mom turns around and smiles softly at me, letting me know that everything is okay. Sorry, honey. Can you take care of your sister today? I'll be busy. Mom asks, and I just nod. It seems like this is going to be a long day. Morning passes and Mom is still working on Samantha's dad. The man is placed on the table used for patients. We never eat there, so I guess that's fine. It would be really gross otherwise. Anyways, I've been curiously eyeing our two guests. They are both dogs, but the only thing they have in common is their brown hair. So, if you think about it, Samantha probably takes after her mother. Just like me and my sister, as we don't look like our dad at all. He's a brown wolf, and Ma is a white vixen. And you can clearly see the resemblance between her and us. Although Dad says that I'll be as tall as him one day. While I was thinking about silly stuff, as per usual, the man starts to cough aggressively. Samantha is now kneeling beside her dad, trying to keep his head high. Meanwhile, Mom is preparing all sorts of equipment. A bucket, some bandages made of leaves from our garden, many other flowers, and a stick. Don't ask me what she's going to do with that, because I don't know. All right, I got everything I need. Help me out, Samantha. Y yes, ma'am. For a while, the man doesn't seem to be getting any better. But as the two of them work on him, he finally calms down. He doesn't cough anymore, and the color of his face turned back to normal. Mom sighs relieved, and Samantha begins to tear up a little. Is it done? Sadly, no. The girl makes a funny face, and then begins to cry once more as Mom shakes her head in denial. It's okay, it's okay. Don't cry. Oh, goddesses, I just... Oh, I don't want him to die. The girl falls to the ground. Mom tries to help her up, but she's unable to. Poor Samantha, I don't know what I would do if something happened to my dad. Eli, come here, honey. I step over the crying Samantha, reaching Mom's side. She looks at me with a worried expression on her face. Eli, sweetie, I need a favor. Mom then walks closer to me, kneeling beside me. She grabs my shoulders and looks to me directly into the eyes. Honey, as you can see, Samantha's dad is very ill, but I can save him. You do? Yes, honey, I do, but I'm going to need your help. I need you to go into the forest and bring me a very specific plant. I'll describe it to you, but you must pay close attention, okay? I nod, making her smile. Her tone of voice is soft but serious at the same time. This plant grows nearby, so you don't have to go very deep into the forest to get it. It has purple flowers with dark green leaves and a lighter stem. There are many plants with purple flowers around here, and some are poisonous, so be careful in your picking. She kisses my forehead and then pats my back softly. Will you be okay? Of course, you can count on me. Okay, sweetie, don't take long. She pretty much pushed me to the entrance, so I had no option but to exit the house and do this for her. It's not like I wouldn't do it, so she really didn't need to be so pushy about it. Oh, Samantha, can you take care of my baby while Eli is outside? Y yes, ma'am, of course. Once outside, I take a moment to enjoy the breeze and the sunlight. I can see our chickens from here. And our horse... Daddy always takes the younger one whenever he goes to the city. I really wish that I could accompany him, but he says I'll have to wait until I'm older. I want to see the capital so bad. But enough of that, Mom needs me to do this. Besides, I can hear the rustling inside, meaning that the two women are most likely trying to keep Samantha's father stable. So I should hurry back. With that in mind, I decide to walk deeper into the forest, trying to find the plant Mom asked for. 
This forest is always full of life. If you watch closely, you can see some bugs, birds, and even a few cute little lizards. There's a stream running close and you can actually hear the melodic sound of the water from here. And to top it all, the tall trees cast a comforting shadow above the rest of the forest, allowing just a few rays of sunlight to reach the ground. I find the forest to be very relaxing, my favorite place in the world. Not that I've visited any other places. Eli, focused. I need to find the plant. I run my hands around the many different types of bushes, moving the leaves and watching carefully. Aha! There it is, I think. The flower is purple, but I'm not sure if this is the one. Ouch! It also has thorns. I must be careful with it. I decide to keep on searching, just in case. And just as I thought, I found another purple plant. This one is thinner, and the flower itself isn't as colorful as the previous one. Could this be the one? I decide to triple check. Better to not take the wrong one. After all, the life of a man depends on this. A few moments pass, and as expected, I found yet another purple flower. This one has a strong smell. That's a good sign, right? Strong smell means strong medicine. They all look kind of similar, though. Which one am I supposed to take home? I believe it is the thin-looking one. This gotta be it. Mom said purple, and this is purple. So I must hurry back. I run back as fast as I can. Luckily, I wasn't far from home, so I was back with a basket full of plants before you can say stinky chicken. I knock on the door and Samantha opens it for me. Oh, thank the goddesses you're back. Please hurry. I just move past her, not saying anything. I'm far more focused on seeing mom's reaction. Here it is, Mom. I present to Mom the basket full of plants. She turns around and smiles brightly to me, giving me a kiss in the forehead. Thanks, honey. This will make things much easier. My tail is wagging and I can't help but smile back at her. Eli, wait outside with Samantha. I must focus on this, okay? I do as Mom says, but Samantha seems reluctant to leave. She ends up doing it anyway as Mom hurries her out. We both sit by a rock outside. Samantha looks anxious, so I try to calm her down by pressing my little paw on her side. It's going to be okay. Mom knows what she's doing. She looks back at me with a kind, yet sad smile, then turns back to the house and sighs. I can just pray for his safety. I tilt my head as she says that, as I'm unsure what she means. Praying? Like hunting? Huh? No, that's not what I... I meant pray to the goddesses. She looks confused as well, so none of us know what to say. Uh, have you ever prayed, Eli? Mm, I don't think so. What's that? Oh, well, I'm not sure how to explain it. Here, try it with me, and we'll do it together. She joins her hands together. I try to mimic that, hoping that I'm doing it properly. Like this? Yes, perfect. Now just clear your mind and close your eyes. Listen to everything around you and imagine a clear sky. Once there, just talk to the goddesses and ask for whatever you want. I close my eyes, trying to imagine that nice spot in the forest that I like a lot. I try to ask for many things, the well-being of my dad and Samantha's of course. I also ask for my little sister and my ma. I wish I could play with her some more, and with daddy too. I spend some time asking for many different things, but nothing happens. I'm confused. Is someone supposed to talk back to me? She opens her eyes as well, a little tear running down her cheek. Oh, well, I'm not sure. The priests say that he can hear the voice of the goddesses. If I'm being honest, I've sadly never heard them myself. But I know that they're up there somewhere, listening to us and keeping us safe. They must be. 
Samantha's eyes brightened as she spoke to me about the teachings of the priest. It was also very interesting. I wonder why we don't pray. Maybe mom forgot to teach us. The day went by and the sun is already setting. I spent the whole day just talking with Samantha. She tried to keep the conversation lively, so I asked her as many things from the town as I could. I've never been outside of this forest, so hearing the awesome stuff they do in town is quite interesting. I want to see a cow so bad now. All I've ever seen are chickens. In between our conversation, the door opens, making Samantha immediately stand up. Mom walks out of the house. She's clearly tired, but has a big smile on her face. He's safe now, Samantha. He is also awake, so you can go check in on him. Samantha immediately leaves my side and runs back to the house. I go by my mom's side and grab her hand. She pats my head and smiles. Did the plant work? Yes, it did. You did an amazing job, honey. I smile back at her, my tail wagging like crazy. I'm a big boy. But I still enjoy it so much when she praises me. We stay like that for some time, just enjoying each other's company. But then I remember a question that's been on my mind since noon. Mom? Why don't we pray? I've been curious all day ever since Samantha taught me how to do it. Hmm. Well, that's a tricky question. Did Samantha say something specific? She just showed me how to pray. I tilt my head looking at her pleadingly for answers. She sighs, kneeling besides me and looking directly to my eyes. Well, in this world, people believe that the goddesses will keep them safe all the time. They think that by only praying, that they will be fine and all things will be given to them eventually, if they're just faithful enough. And while that's a nice thought, well, your dad and I have our reasons to think that's not true. But how do you know? She seems a little taken aback by that last question. But then she smiles and scratches my ear. When your father comes back, we'll explain it to you, okay? I don't like her answer, but if I just have to wait for daddy, it won't be so bad. It's okay, honey. I promise. Eh, that's okay. I'll wait. But shouldn't dad be back by now? Well, maybe he got distracted with something, or he had to stay the night in the capital. I hope he's okay. I pray for his safety. But now, I know that won't work. My ears drop, as I can't help but miss my dad. Mom kisses my head and tickles my belly, making me laugh. It's the thought that counts, honey. Now, let's go inside. It's getting late. The next day, nothing really interesting happened. Samantha left by the morning with her dad, as mom allowed them to stay the night. So aside from talking with Samantha for a while, it's been a very uneventful day. It's almost nighttime, and I can't help but wonder what happened to dad. He hasn't returned yet, and I have a nasty feeling in my belly. Mom told me that I shouldn't worry, but I miss him terribly. I'm currently sitting by the window, looking to the forest path, wishing to see a glimpse of dad's fur among the trees. But nothing has happened so far. Nothing yet? Mom sits beside me, patting my head as she hums a song. No, nothing. Is he really okay, Ma? Should we go look after him? You know your dad, honey. He's probably picking rocks by a river or something silly like that. He's always been a dreamer and a bit of an airhead. You took that from him. As Mom keeps talking about Dad, my ears pick up on a rustling among the bushes. I take a closer look, and in fact, I see the glimpse of brown fur among the trees. I jump off of Mom as fast as I can, running to the door. She tells me to wait, but I'm too excited to listen. I run as fast as I can towards the bushes, where I've seen Dad. I want to ask him so many things, but first, he'll get a big hug. Dad! Oh no! A gnome is attacking me! I was feeling so happy it took me a moment to realize that I'm not hugging my dad. What are you doing here, Mr. Biscotti? The old man starts to laugh, 
his gray beard moved up and down as he does so. Ah, little Eli, I am so glad to see you. I feared that I got lost in this forest. This huge brown wolf is called Mr. Biscotti. He's my dad's partner in the capital, a merchant. He helps dad with his business, and in return he gets a discount from him. Or that's what mom told me. I'm not that little anymore. We both start to laugh. He pats my head and nods happily, then scratches my ear some, making my tail wag excitedly. Ah yes, you've grown quite a few inches since I last saw you, haven't you? Mr. Piscotti has been here a few times, and I like him a lot. He treats me nice, and he often brings me gifts from town. How's your mom, kiddo? She's fine. We're expecting daddy, but he hasn't shown up yet. His face turns sour for a moment, as he seems to be thinking about something serious. He then smiles, as if nothing happened. Ah, before I forget, I got something for you. You're going to love it for sure. No way! Is it a cow? Please tell me it's a cow! Uh, a... a cow? Sorry boy, I can't fit a cow on my backpack. My ears drop, as I feel disappointed of not getting a cow. He takes off his heavy-looking backpack, then starts rummaging through its contents. I just stay there, watching him curiously until he finally takes out a little red box and gives it to me. Go ahead, kiddo. Open it. He carries back his stuff, and then looks at me with anticipation. I take a look inside. There, I see a blue feather sitting in the middle of the little box. It looks pretty, but aside from that, it's just a normal feather. It's... nice? You don't like it? N no I like it, but... Ah, I get it. You don't like my gifts unless it's an expensive object. You're so cheeky, little Eli. My face turns red as the old man keeps laughing at me. But eventually he stops, wiping a tear from his cheek. It's okay, Eli. I know it looks cheap, but it's not. I bought it in one of my travels to Elerant, the one and only bird state. Or United States, as I guess it's not the only one anymore. That perks up my curiosity as I've never seen another species in my life. All I've ever seen are many different types of canines. Is this feather some sort of special artifact? Well, you could say that. It's supposed to be one of the feathers from the younger member of the High Senate. Oh, wow! I don't know what any of that means, but it must be important. I know, right? You better take care of it, you hear? With my life. I hug the little box into my chest, jumping happily with it. Ah, Biscotti, it was you after all. Mom walks close to us and smiles politely to Mr. Biscotti. The man does the same. It's always a pleasure to admire your beauty, Hilda. Aren't you married? Ah, yes, my beautiful wife. How can I forget? Mom teases the old man, making him laugh. He then places his big hand on my shoulder. That aside, I'm quite tired. May I come in? Ah, yes, of course. Let's talk inside, honey. Help Mr. Biscotti with his things. A cold sweat runs down my back, as I imagine myself carrying such a heavy backpack. Luckily for me, Mr. Piscotti shakes his head in denial. That won't be necessary. These old bones are used to carrying heavy things anyways. Besides, he is too young. Wouldn't want to crush him. I sigh relieved, knowing that I won't die today. We all smile to each other, then enter the house. Once inside, we all sit around the table. Mom pours some tea for the two of them. I drink some milk instead. So, how's the capital? As busy as ever, lately things have been getting heated because of the general discomfort from the people towards the king. No one wants an old man as their king. And the fact that he has no male heir is giving his retractors an excuse to throw shit at him. I giggle at the mention of a bad word. Mom sends Mr. Biscotti a nasty look, kicking him under the table. Ah, sorry throwing poop at him. Much better. The two of them talk for a while about many different subjects. Most of them I don't understand, but I listen anyway, happy to have Mr. Biscotti as a guest. Ah yes, I almost forgot what I came for in the first place. 
This brain of mine is not what it used to be. I have a message for you. It's from your husband. My ears perk up at the mention of daddy. Mommy seems to notice that as she pats my back and smiles. Go to bed, honey. The adults need to talk. But, 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 I want to know what happened to dad. Eli. I, to bed. Mom hardly ever yells at me, but when she does, it's very scary. This is so unfair. I tear up as I run to the other room, hitting the wall harshly behind me. I hide behind a wall, hugging my knees as I curse under my breath. Was that necessary? If my hunch is correct, it's better that he's not here. I can still hear the conversation anyways, so the fact that she sent me here makes no sense. Stupid mom and her stupid rules. What is the message? Yes, of course. He said this to me before leaving. Hide the true heart and lock the book. That is all. I can hear mom sighing deeply. What are they talking about? Is daddy okay? Do you know where he is? No, I'm sorry, Hilda. He left before I did, so I can only guess he took the long route here. I hope you're alright. Thanks for coming all the way here, Biscotti. My pleasure. But, are you going to be okay? If there's something going on, you know you can count on me. I hear the screech from one of the chairs, meaning that one of them stood up from the table. Then there are footsteps. Light ones. Probably mom's. No, it's okay. I'll do as he says and then leave this house. Why not come to my shop in the city? Your kids will be safe there. I appreciate it, but we can't. The city won't be safe. Who is following you? If I'm being honest, I don't know for sure. But I have an idea of who it is. Or rather, who they are. Hilda. But don't worry, we already have a place to go. We'll be leaving by tomorrow. If my husband is okay, we will meet him there. Okay, just know that I'm here for you, Hilda. I hear a second screech. This time, it must have been Mr. Biscotti who stood up from the table. No one says anything for a while, but then I hear the door opening. I'll be off then. Take care, Hilda. Thank you, Mr. Biscotti, for everything. I just hope we meet again. Ah, uh, don't say it like that. We will meet again. Just try not to make your house even deeper into the forest, or else I'll get lost for sure. I'll consider it. The two of them laugh, but then silence sets in. I can no longer hear Mr. Biscotti, so I'm guessing that he already left. After a while, I hear footsteps again. Oh no, they're coming this way. I step away from the door and jump into my bed. Soon after, the door opens and Mom steps in. I hide under the covers and say nothing. Mom sits beside me and gives me a kiss. I'm so sorry, honey. I know you heard. And that's okay. I just didn't want you to see me crying. Mom's voice is a little broken. But as always, she's trying to keep a strong facade in front of me, even if I can't see her. What happened to Daddy? He's fine, honey. I promise. Her usual confidence has vanished completely, and now I'm not sure if I can believe her. But we need to leave, okay? We'll meet with Daddy in a new house. What? Mom, I can't leave without him. What if he needs help? I want to get up, but Mom hugs me and holds me tight. Ali, please, listen to me. We need to leave no matter what. The sooner the better. So be a good boy and go to sleep early. We leave in the morning. But, but. No more buts, honey. Everything will be okay. J just trust me. She gives me a last kiss and then leaves, closing the door behind her. I'm unable to sleep for the rest of the night. My mind is wandering about a lot of things. But the main one is, what if daddy is in danger? What if he needs my help? I need to go looking for him. Making sure that mom doesn't hear me. I decide to sneak out of my window into the night. I've never been outside at night on my own. 
the sounds of the night creatures, the darkness, everything feels new and scary. But I'm sure Dad must be scared as well, so I try my hardest to push down my fear, pressing forward into the night and deeper into the forest. I take a last glance into the house. I can still see my mom in the main room, running around as she prepares everything for the moving. I know she will worry, but she'll thank me once I return with Dad. I'm sorry, Mom. I'll bring Daddy back. I whisper to myself and then begin to walk away from the house. I can hardly see a thing in the forest. With my only light being the moon, I hit my face with branches more times than I can count. I also slip on a rock, hurting my knee. And now I'm lost for sure. I've never been on this side of the forest, and I don't know where to go. It feels like I've been walking forever. But that doesn't make sense. I remember mom said that there was a village nearby. Then why can't I find it? I slide down a tree trunk, hugging my legs tightly. I'm scared, lost, tired and cold. This was such a stupid idea. I'm so stupid. I have no idea where I'm going or where to search for daddy. Maybe I should go and find Mr. Biscotti. He mentioned that he would be staying in the village nearby. No, that won't solve a thing because I don't even know how to reach that place. As soon as that thought crosses my mind, I hear a rustling in some bushes. I held my breath as I listened carefully. But now there is only silence. Scared for my life, I begin to run back from where I came from. I don't want to be eaten by the monsters of the forest. I'm going to tell mom I'm sorry for being a bad boy and escaping the house. Then she'll give me a kiss and everything will be alright. I say to myself, trying to calm down. I ran and ran, but I couldn't find my way back. Perfect. This is just perfect. I start to panic, unsure of what to do. What if I never come back? What if mom gets in trouble because I left? What if dad comes back tomorrow and I'm not there? My mind wants to give up, but then I smell it. It is the faint scent of fire. And it's not far from here. The smell led towards my house, so I decide to follow it. It must be mom. She lit a campfire for me to know the way back. If my nose is right, I'm close. Mom, I'm home. I'm sorry. I scream, turning around on a tree that would lead to my house. But when I arrived back, I couldn't believe my eyes. The place that I used to call home was burning itself to ashes. I have no idea what's going on, but there are many questions in my mind at the same time. What happened here? Where is mom? Is Mary alright? I decide to circle around the house trying to catch a glimpse of the inside. If mom and Mary are still there, I need to save them. Mom! I yell, but no one answers. Maybe they are fine. They could have exited the house before the fire started but I need to make sure, so I decide to search them more. Aha! The back side of the house is free from fire, so I climb among the rubble and make my way in. I press through the rubble and fall in logs, pushing myself in. But once inside, I see. Mom! Mother is trapped under many thick logs. Her eyes are closed, and I can't see if she's breathing so I don't know if she is alive or not. Mom, wake up! We need to go! I reach her side, holding her head in my hands, shaking it softly. She's breathing. Mom, please! Wake up! I shake her head softly again, trying to wake her up at any cost. She opens her eyes slowly and looks at me as if she's seeing a ghost. Eh... Ellie? I smile and hug her, Relieved that she's alive. Mom, you gotta tell me what to do. I need to save you. Just tell me. I push and push, but these things are way too heavy for me. Ellie, you must run, baby. Save yourself. The fire is closing in, so I begin to punch the damn things, making cuts in my fists. Ellie, stop. I pay her no mind. I must save her. I just must. I'm not losing her. Not like this. Why won't you budge, you stupid thing? I can see blood dripping down my fists, but I don't care. 
Even if I have to break my hand, I'm going to save her. Honey, the fire is closing in. Run! You must save yourself! No, I'm not leaving you behind. I can't. I just can't. I start to cry, sliding to the ground. Stupid tears. Now is not the time for this. I need to be strong, so please, stop coming out. Mom, what am I supposed to do? Please tell me. I'm sobbing on the ground, as useless as ever. She gently presses her free hand on my head, giving me one of those head scratches I love so much. Eli, listen to me. I look up to her. Her smile is kind, but full of sadness. Yet, she is as strong as I remember. There are bad people in this world. They will try to hurt you and do horrible things to you. You must stay away from them at any cost, okay? Mom, what? Listen to what mommy has to say, okay, honey? I just nod and listen. She smiles back at me. You've always been such a good puppy. I want you to live a happy life, Eli. That is all I've ever wished for. But there will be times when you feel like giving up, or times when you think that you would be better off dead. I want you to push those awful thoughts aside and remember that mommy will always love you. Because I will always be there with you, okay? I'm silent, unable to understand why she's telling me all of this stuff. She'll be fine. Right? Please forgive me if I was ever too harsh on you. I just wanted you to be a strong person. M mommy? Come here, you silly puppy. She pushes me against her chest, hugging me tight. I can hear the slow beating of her heart. I am so proud of you, my baby boy. I really love you. But once I am gone, I'll need you to be strong and find your sister. Some bad men took her, and she is probably very scared. Go with Mr. Biscotti and tell him what happened. He will help you. Just follow the stream, honey. But, 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 mommy. Shh. Everything will be all right, honey. Mommy will always be watching over you. Even in those cold, lonely nights that scare you so much, I'll be there with you. Forever and ever. She holds me tight, and so do I. Her motherly scent calms me down a little, the one that I grew up with and would never forget. I don't ever want to let her go. And one last thing, sweetie. When the fire dies down, there is a red box under the house. In it, there is a collar shaped like a heart. I need you to take care of it. Just imagine that my soul will be in it, and never lose it. She then lets go of me. Now go, live your life, baby, and do it however you please, and never let anyone tell you what to do, or how you should be. I back down from her, her smile never fades as she looks at me with those kind eyes of hers. Mommy loves you. I turned around, climbing among the rubble, but I took a last glance at her. She was crying. I dropped to the ground. Tears won't stop coming out of my eyes. She is gone. She really is gone. And it's all my fault. Why did I run away? Why am I such an idiot? Why did this have to happen? What even happened? Mom! I scream into the night sky. I feel so alone and broken. I lost my mom. My sister was kidnapped by some strangers. What am I supposed to do? Please, someone tell me what to do. I knew I heard something. A mysterious voice comes from behind me. When I turn around, I see two coated men standing near the edge of the forest. I eye them both up and down, but all I can see are their tails and ears. Is that the other brat? Was he hiding? One of them walks closer to me, but I quickly stand up, taking some steps away from him. Who are you? I snarl at him. He just chuckles and stops his approach. I guess you won't be that easy. Figures. 
What are you doing? Grab him. How? I don't know, stupid. Knock him down or something. You're bigger. Think of something. So you really had to call me stupid, boss? The two figures start to argue among them. I keep on watching them cautiously. That's when I spotted the red book mom used to read to me all the time. The red-coated figure has it. I remember what mom said about the evil people that were after us. So I grab a thick stick and hold it high. What did you do to my sister? Whoa, kid. Easy with that. You wouldn't want to hurt us, do you? Just grab the damn child. He tries to reach me, moving slowly as if I were a mere wild animal. I swing the stick, getting a clean hit on his chest, knocking down the metal he had on his coat. Shit, that kind of hurt. Ugh, stop this nonsense. We have the book, the pendant, and the baby. Just get rid of this nuisance. The red one says with his cold and commanding voice. Weird. Why does the big shadow allow himself to be treated this way? I mean, he is way bigger. You sure? He's a kid. Did I stutter? Just do as I say, idiot. Imagine how difficult it will be to smuggle a kid into the city without looking suspicious. The city? I ask, but none of them even turn to look at me. Okay, you're the boss. The red-coated shadow disappears into the forest, while the other steps closer and closer to me. He then takes out a dagger, running it through his hands as if it was a mere toy. S stay away, I'm warning you. Sorry, nothing personal, kid. It happened in a flash. He moved so quick that my eyes could barely see him move. But now, he is standing where he was a moment ago. As if nothing happened. What? My mind feels dizzy, and there is a certain taste in my mouth. One that is foreign to me. Tastes like dirt, but much stronger. I hope you meet your mom in the afterlife. Goodbye, kiddo. Wait. Wait. I could barely talk. My vision is turning into a blur, and my legs feel weak. Eventually, I fall to the ground. The moon is shining bright in the sky. Such a beautiful sight. But I would have never guessed that this would be the last time I see it. I turn my head to see the big man disappear into the shadows of the forest. I raise my hand, trying to reach him, but my arms are too weak. No. My mouth feels dry, and I'm puking blood. I want to move with all my strength, but it's no use. I can barely lift my finger. If her back. The disgusting taste grows stronger in my mouth, and I can't breathe. But as weird as it sounds, I'm not feeling any pain. Even as I can clearly see the cut in my chest. I touch it, trying to cover it up, but there is nothing that I can do about it. Mom, I'm so sorry. I broke the promise that I made to you. I didn't manage to save her or retrieve the pendant. I didn't even keep my own life. All those thoughts fill me with fear and sadness. I don't want to die. I want to see the forest again. I want to see Mary's smile once more, smell mom, and play with daddy. I don't want to die. But I'm dying. Chapter 1, The Three Guardians, and that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Oh, save. Um, so, what did you guys think of the prologue of Heart of Amethyst? Uh, what do you think is going to happen to the poor little puppy? I mean, obviously he grows up, but um, uh, do you think that he's eventually going to find his sister? Do you think he's never going to find her? Um... Do you think he's going to go on a quest to rescue his sister, uh, get the pendant and the book back or something? I mean, he's he clearly survives that what would be a mortally fatal wound. But um, uh, it's highly doubtful that he 
you know, is able to do all of those things so soon. I'm assuming that he's eventually going to be rescued and found by Mr. Biscotti, or he's going to move in with him or something. I'm lying, I already know what happens. <laughs> I read a little farther past this, but not too far. Um, but yeah, um, are you guys excited to see how the story develops? Because it is an ongoing story that just started this year. I think like at the middle of the year? the year august september somewhere around there i forget um so yeah expect this to you know be added to the lineup uh i think that there might be one more episode's worth for now so expect to see this next week and then we'll figure out what i'm gonna do next after that uh, that's why i asked for recommendations i want to see what you guys want me to um do but there are certain stories that i that i'm shying away from like for example um temptations ballad i know some people want me to do it but um it's kind of lewd like more so than most other ones and i'm really on the fence about that one if the main character just had a teeny bit more clothes i think it would be fine but um yeah i mean I do the smoke room on here, so I guess it wouldn't be such a big deal, but eh. I also do not do not like the main character, the hyena. I, I may be a hyena furry, but I just do not like the main character. I find him so annoying. But anyways, back to the story. Um, so yeah. Put in, down in the comments what you think the story is going to be about, and uh, if you like it so far, if you want to see more of it or whatever. Um, but anyways, um... Thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Heart of Amethyst yourself, you can find it over on Itch. And if it has a Twitter account, then I will link to it. And you will most likely be able to find a link to it on there, you know, to the directly to the Itch page. And it has a Discord, which I am part of, I think. Let me check real quick. Um, Discord. Uh, is there one? Actually, I don't know if there is, but if there is one, then I will post it down in the um, description and, you know, you guys can follow it there. And um, what else? If they have a Patreon, then I will also post uh, a link down for that. And that's it for now. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye.